Every man and his dog has an awning on their four-wheel drive these days. It's so common and there's so many to choose from. How do you decide? Well, stick around and I'll tell you guys why I reckon this is one of the better awnings on the market. G'day guys. Oh, I guess it's night time, so that doesn't really make sense. But anyway, I've camped out of this camp kitchen for probably about eight or nine weeks, you know, on different trips. Some were longer, some were shorter. And overall, you know, everything works pretty well. Everything's got a place. But there's just one thing that this kitchen setup's been really missing, and that's shelter. Now, admittedly, when you open the canopy door, it does give you a little bit of protection from the sun and from the rain. Um, admittedly, the rain usually comes in the side, so it doesn't really give you that much. So the table here usually gets wet, and if the fridge is out, that gets wet too. Now, in the past, I have used a three meter by three meter gazebo, and they're really, really cool, because you know you can put them wherever you want, whatever side of the car you want. You can park your car under it if you really want. But the trouble with them is they're quite bulky and heavy, and you always have to remember to take them. While a four wheel drive awning, it's always on the car, ready to go. So, I always knew I was gonna get an awning, but I just couldn't find one that was the right shape, size, and was just gonna work with my setup. Until I finally found one that was gonna work. So uh, it came in the mail today. I always love it when stuff comes in the mail on a Friday because you know you got the whole weekend to play with it. So let's check it out. This awning is from a brand called Super Peg. Now I'm familiar with Super Peg mainly because I'm a big fan of their steel tent peg. I reckon these are a great unit and especially at the price that they come at, really good product. But I never even knew that they do awnings until I saw this one on their website and it was the right shape, the right size, and everything just added up. It's got some really cool design features as well, so I'm pretty excited to test it out this weekend, especially because we might be getting some rain. So let's get this thing installed. Check out this fancy little bag. You know it's a good quality product when it comes with the Super Peg as standard. You're not gonna have to replace it the second you get into hard ground. Um, also comes with four straps, a manual, and a roof rack mount kit. Some awnings on the market don't even come with brackets to install the awning with. I know my last awning didn't, but this comes with stainless steel brackets, stainless steel fasteners. You know it's gonna last for a long, long time. That's just awesome. So the only thing is that these brackets are designed for roof rack bars, like your rhino rack and that kind of thing. They're not really designed for trays, but I'm pretty keen to take this awning out this weekend, so. Let's figure out a way to make this work. It's getting pretty cold in Perth at the moment. Winter's coming, so I'm kind of glad that this came in the mail today as well. Good opportunity to test it out, you know, on a nice cold winter's night. Alrighty. So, these are the brackets that came with... Do I look weird with my hoodie on? These are the brackets that came with the roof rack awning. And uh, this is a bit of flat bar. I've drilled three holes in it. So the theory is we're just gonna sandwich the roof rack and uh, pretty much got together whatever bolts I could find that are gonna work. So this is gonna be a bit of a temporary thing, but it'll get us by. Alrighty, I think this is gonna work out. So if I have this bracket about here, I'll just get my little bit of flat bar underneath. We'll just sandwich the roof rack and we should be Mickey Mouse. Oh man, I've run out of spring washers. So what do you guys do for fun on Friday nights? Yeah, this should work out awesome. Oh man, except that bolt's too short, dang it. I've just left this bracket a little bit loose. That'll allow it to square up when we put the awning on. So I'm just gonna do the same thing over on the back side and then we should be able to try and get the awning on. I've got a bad feeling this one's gonna be too short as well. Oh, might just work. Awesome stuff, let's try and get this awning on. I'm a bit worried about how well that actually went. It's not normal for things to go that well. Something must be wrong. Man, that is such a sweet height. It's barely higher than my roof rack, so I should still be able to go in parking lots. First up, I'm just gonna tighten these bolts that actually hold the awning on, because that way the brackets can square themselves up to the awning. Awesome stuff, now all I gotta do is tighten these ones up and then we're done. I'm actually really stoked at the level that it's actually sitting at. What a fluke, hey? I mean, that was all planned. Anyway, guys, that's the awning installed, which is awesome. I'm gonna try and squeeze in a quick little overnighter tomorrow night. So it's probably gonna rain, so it'll be the perfect test for it. So we'll catch you guys then. 
Who am I kidding? I wouldn't be able to go to sleep without giving this thing a test. This awning is just the perfect size. So stoked with it. All right guys, catch you tomorrow. As usual, the weatherman got it completely wrong. We did not see one drop of rain last night. But even so, it was really cool to test out the awning for the first time. This awning is just perfect for this kind of side kitchen canopy kind of cooking setup. You can see the table over here, completely out of the sun and the rain. Same as the fridge, completely out of the sun and the rain. And uh, even in this side on shot here, you can just see that there's no way you're gonna get wet while you're cooking because that's virtually the biggest deal for me because there's nothing worse than sitting in the rain in a rain jacket trying to cook your sausages over a little gas cooker. Man, get that fly off my lens. So really stoked with this awning. Obviously I've only had it for one day so I can't really tell you guys all the pros and cons. So today I'm just gonna give you guys my initial impressions, um, some really cool features that this awning has that other awnings don't and also some cons as well. So let's get stuck into it. One of the coolest things about this awning is actually what it's made out of. So this is made out of Dynaproof canvas. A lot of the other awnings on the market are made out of a poly cotton canvas. Now you may be kind of wondering like, it, it has canvas in the name, what's the big deal? It's gotta be good. Well, the biggest difference is, uh, let me explain it to you this way. Have you ever sat on the beach under somebody's awning, that's a poly cotton canvas awning, and you just feel the heat radiating out of the awning. So even though you're in the shade, you can just feel the heat from the sun. So with this canvas product, you shouldn't be able to feel that as much because it's canvas, it breathes a lot better, disperses the heat a lot better and totally blocks out the sun. So that's one thing that I really like about this awning. It's a 275 GSM canvas, which is a nice high rating. And it's also rot and mildew resistant, which is awesome because how many times have you packed up an awning wet and forgot to dry it out? I know I have in the past. So technically, if you do do that and you get a bit of mildew, you should just be able to get some warm soapy water and a sponge pretty much and just clean it off. So that's one thing that I really do like about this awning. All of the poles that come with this awning are actually part of the awning. So they fold up with the awning. Some of the other brands that I looked at, the poles are actually separate. Well, these are awesome because when you're setting up, they're right where you need them. That brings me to the other thing I like about these poles. Now, I had an ARB awning in the past and they have a little metal cam here that twists and grabs the other pole as you're spinning it. Um, some of the cheaper awnings, that's made out of plastic. Now, I've seen both the metal and the plastic ones wear out and eventually they just become really hard to actually make them lock. So Superpeg here have designed their own little, once that decides to focus, this little shim here. So as you spin the pole, that twists and catches the other pole. Now, I'm not saying that this is gonna last longer, but I'm just glad that someone's finally come along and redesigned something, so hopefully this lasts a lot longer than the old design. They have actually designed their own feet for their poles, and uh, what they recommend is to actually drive the pegs through so they cross each other like that to give it the best chance of it not blowing over the roof. So if you ask me, that's a fantastic idea. Anybody that's owned an awning and used it out camping a fair bit knows there's one problem with them water pooling. So when it rains really heavy, you get water kind of pool in this area here. So what you can do is drop one corner of the awning to allow the water to run off. And uh, it's good to remember to do that. I remember one night I forgot to do that. I woke up in the middle of the night to this loud bang, kind of thought, oh, I wonder what that was, went back to sleep. Unzip my swag in the morning and uh, yeah, the awning was on my swag. So that was pretty funny. But Superpeg have come up with a fantastic idea. 
Now this is an optional extra that they sell, but this is just so cool. So it just slips into there like that. Slips into there like that. You just tighten this little nut screw here and uh, check that out. This curved rafter means that no water pulls at all. It should all run off the sides because it's supported in the center with that little curve. Now, is that a fantastic idea or what? I think this is what four drivers have been waiting for. You don't have to worry about dropping one leg or anything like that, it's done. Now that being said, the nice thing about this awning is that you can still adjust the pitch of the roof thanks to these flexible hinges. Because a lot of the other wing awnings on the market, they have fixed hinges because they are freestanding. Now the thing with that is whatever level the awning's mounted at, that's the level that it has to come out at. So if you have a four inch lift and 35 inch muddies on a really high vehicle, chances are if you put it out, your poles, your legs might not actually be able to touch the ground. Now, if you have a really low car, like a Subaru Forester, I don't know why people actually put awnings on vehicles like that, but I have seen it. You can actually pitch the roof up to get some decent height under the awning. So it is just a nice thing because if you do have any water pooling issues, you can always drop one leg. Or if you have a really low car, you can pitch it up. If you have a really high car, you can pitch it down so that your legs actually touch the ground. So it's just really versatile that way. One thing that really sold me on this awning is the size when it's packed up. So it's 2.1 meters long, which is perfect for the canopy. But also another thing, it's nice and low profile. I had a look at the Darchi 180 degree awning install and it just sits really, really tall. So with this one, I can actually still drive into a 2.3 meter underground car park, which is something that I would still be able to like to do. And uh, as a result, it is a little bit wider, but that's not really an issue for me. So I'm really stoked with how it sits on the roof rack. It's really nice actually. How long does it actually take to set up? I'll show you guys in a minute. There is just a little bit of prep work that you need to do with the straps just to be ready for the setup. This is gonna be the third time that I've set up this awning. Let's see how long it takes me. Alrighty, how long was that? It took me three minutes to set up the awning, which I didn't think was too bad at all. Admittedly, you do have to put the four straps around the car, so there is a little bit of prep work involved, maybe a minute or two of prep work. But even five minutes, that's a pretty good time to be able to set something like this up by yourself. And I've got to say, once it's set up, it is a really solid unit. But let's talk about some of the things that people could view as cons, some bad points about this awning. So one thing about this awning is that it's not freestanding. So what that means is when you put out the awning, it can't support its own weight. Awnings like the Dachi 180 degree awning, they can be self-supporting and support their own weight, but this one can't. But the downside is, is the Dachi awning is a lot more heavy duty, and as a result, it's a lot more bulkier. While this one is nice and compact, so it really depends what works better for you. Because personally, I prefer to have a compact design that isn't freestanding. And the funny thing is, is with the Darchi awning, they still recommend to peg it down if it's windy, which in Western Australia, it pretty much always is. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but it really depends what works for you. Another thing that I'm not too sure about is these plastic buckles that come with the straps. Um, I've had plastic buckles break on my swag and all sorts of other things. But I guess the thing is, I understand why they need to be plastic at the same time, because I wouldn't really want a metal buckle scratching up my hood. So we'll just see how they go. I showed you guys the feet on these poles a bit earlier. There is one little thing that I'm not too sure about. I could be wrong, but I don't think the little hook on a sand peg is gonna fit through that hole. Um, what you could do though, is just get a little bit of parachute cord and just tie a loop and put the peg through that, like other awnings have. But uh, yeah, until I try it, I just won't really know. I guess the thing is, I wasn't really expecting to need a sand peg out here, you know? You know what I'm saying? All right, so I'm down at the beach and uh, I got some sand pegs this time, so let's see. Oh, look at that, you can actually get the hook through. So uh, I was wrong, again. Can't believe it. I 
I guess that's the only thing with this. You gotta bang in one end at a time to make it even. Or you could just use one sand peg. Gotta say, that's pretty solid when it's in though. There you go guys, you can use it with sand pegs. So you might be wondering how much does an awning like this cost? Well, for this one here, the recommended retail is $800, but at the time of filming, it was on sale for $720. Now they do have your standard two and a half meter by two and a half meter awnings as well. And I'm pretty sure they were on sale for $200, which I thought was pretty reasonably priced. They do also have a stack of different accessories. And also if you break anything, their website has all the replacement parts, so that's awesome too. But this curved roof rafter is just next level stuff. I just can't wait to try it out in the rain because I reckon it's gonna work so well. And they also got wall kits and all that kind of stuff as well. So I might eventually give one of them a go. But that's it from me guys. We'll, I'll catch up with you guys in probably about a year and uh, see how this awning's held up. But for now, ciao, catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Oh. And there was one other downside. It didn't come with a sticker. What kind of four-wheel drive product doesn't come with a sticker? Tell ya. So it was meant to rain this weekend. So I was like, oh yeah, great. It'll be perfect to test out the new awning, you know, see how it goes in the rain. Well, I've packed up, I'm just about to leave and it's just started raining. Typical. Seek adventure.